Uh, I want to talk to you today about high FSH because this is uh, really common when it comes to women trying to get pregnant and um, a pretty common cause of infertility. So uh, I do want to tell you that it is possible to lower your FSH, uh, but I also want to tell you that it does take work and it does take commitment. Sorry, my phone is blowing up. Okay, so first I want to really give you a simple explanation of one of um, kind of what's happening with FSH and uh, I'm going to simplify it a lot. Uh, but basically FSH is follicle stimulating hormone and um, it's released by the pituitary and basically uh, when it's time to stimulate your follicles or your eggs, the pituitary gland will release follicle stimulating hormone and it sends them to your follicles which are then stimulated and they get big and juicy and they release um, estrogens that are then kind of received by the pituitary gland and the pituitary gland having done its job and stimulated the follicles, um, stops output of follicle stimulating hormone, FSH. So um, basically then you'll have a good or low FSH number, ideally below six. It's like released a little bit, the follicles were stimulated, uh, they got nice and juicy, and then everything was done. So this, uh, when this happens, this indicates that your follicles are actually um, healthy. They're being stimulated. They're, they're healthy, they're juicy, they're doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and on a very uh, inaccurate kind of very basic um, way to describe this, I like to kind of describe everything in terms of nature. So it's almost like if you think of the pituitary and the FSH as like the sun, uh, the, the pituitary is the sun, it's releasing heat, and you think of the follicles, your eggs, as the ocean. So the sun and the ocean, or yin and yang. Um, so basically, if you don't have enough of this yin, ocean, water, cooling, the sun energy will get overheated and too hot. And um, by the same token, if you have too much, the sun gets excessive, too hot, it'll dry up the ocean. So that's kind of how I like to think about it. It's almost like, um, in your body you don't have enough of this yin cooling um, energy that's going to make your follicles nice and ripe and juicy so you're kind of getting this like overheated hot uh, pituitary which is like pumping out heat or FSH um, and often this is caused by an excess of heat or not enough of the yin so this often happens when women get older um, because as we get older, uh, especially post 35, we kind of start losing some yin or uh, our estrogens get low or our estrogens stop kind of converting, aromatizing into what else they're supposed to become, either progesterone or, um, anyway, I'm not gonna go there. That's getting a little ahead of myself. But um, basically it is possible to lower your FSH. I've had um, patients coming in with FSH numbers above 50. Um, and I've had them lower down to b below 10, which is, it's still a little high, but it's within normal range. I believe that IVF clinics will stop working with you, um, or not consider using your own eggs, um, in IVF if your FSH is above, uh, 12, because that's indicative that your follicles are just not good enough quality, so your FSH keeps being pumped out. Um, so basically, it does take three months at least to improve the quality of your eggs. And basically what that looks like is really, really nourishing and nurturing your yin, uh, which is like the dark, receptive, cooling, um, really just like nurturing, juicy um, kind of aspect of your body. Yin is more, we see it as more driving, striving, um, hot going, you know, that kind of energy. So when women ask me, how do I nurture my eggs? It's kind of like nurture yourself. You know, your eggs are just a part of you. And I almost like to think of this as like, um, you know, a test. Like many women will say, I don't have time to do this, or I don't have time to do that. And I'll, I'll tell you what they're saying that against, but it's almost like you need to make this time. Like proving that you can make this time is kind of, um, showing your body that you can make time for yourself when you're pregnant and you can make time for your baby and um, you can also look at it as like really taking this time to really feel and nurture and nourish your inner child um, so nurturing your yin 
looks a lot like really, really, really taking care of yourself um, and doing all the things you would for a child, like feeding yourself really healthy, good foods at regular times, um, going to bed by 10 o'clock at night, um, turning off the screen ideally after 6 p.m. The night is the yin time. so we heal a lot at night so it's really important to heal during this time the yin time to really support that yin to really um, let yourself have that yin time and and kind of stop stimulating and overstimulating yourself during the yin hours so um, ideally like start winding down around six o'clock like turn off screens let yourself have a nice meal talk read um, light a fire take a bath water um, is kind of one of the main elements of yin. So we really wanna spend a lot of time in water. So like an Epsom salt bath. This is why I have so many baths in my fertility regimens because um, nourishing your yin is so important during every phase of your cycle. Um, but especially during the follicular phase, which is the yin phase. So check out my blogs for sure. I have a lot of um, blogs and writings about supporting your body during the yin phase, this follicular phase. So read about how to nourish yin. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, stress. So stress, when you get stressed, your body releases cortisol, which is um, kind of the precursor for all of your other hormones. So if you keep releasing cortisol, it's really hard for you to have um, balanced other hormones. And also during your um, follicular phase, we wanna look at your temperatures. I often show my patients how to track um, their basal body temperature. I have uh, a blog and a video on that, so be sure to watch that too, because it's really important to track your basal body temperature. But during this yin phase, which is basically the time after you're done bleeding until right around before ovulation, um, so I often say like days five through 11, but it's different depending on your cycle. Um, but we'll want our temperatures, first early morning temperatures, basal body temperatures during this time to be low, like 97.1, 97.2, um, and consistent. So it's almost like you're, you're baking your eggs, you know, and you want the temperature to be low and slow. And if you find that during this phase you have what we call a sawtooth pattern, which is like your temperature is going from 97.2, and then the next morning it's all the way up at 97.6, and then it's back down, it's almost like you're trying to bake, um, what do you call that thing that rises? It's not fondue. I can't think of it. Um, anyway, it's like you're baking something and you're just not keeping the temperature consistent. And this is almost like you're not cooking your eggs um, in a way that's healthy for them, that makes them healthy. And we want to have really low, consistent, like low and slow temperatures. And if our cortisol keeps spiking uh, from stress, it's also going to spike our temperatures. So um, stress and doing whatever you can to reduce stress is really, really, really important for lowering your FSH. Um, there's definitely some supplements that are great for lowering your FSH, and I have those on my website and my yin phase blogs and uh, my blog about how to lower your FSH. Um, and then also I have a low uh, FSH, high FSH bundle um, available on my website, and that has all the things that are great for lowering FSH, including my two teas. One is my Fertile Mama Tea, which is great for um, fertility across the board, but if you're cycling with my teas, then you would use that one. Um, during the yin phase. Um, and then I also have a wise woman tea, which if your FSH is above 20, then I definitely recommend using that one too, uh, because that actually has some like herbs for really nourishing your yin and cooling this excessive, excessive heat, uh, which is common around menopause. So um, all of this is good for if you have low AMH, have been diagnosed with low ovarian reserve, early menopause, um, so I'm nearing my time where I think Instagram is going to cut me off. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, check out my website, Wisdom of the Womb Online, and um, shoot me up with any questions. Or hit me up. Shoot me up is something totally different. So <laughs> ignore that. All right, bye.